I'm living my faith life. I ain't going back and forth with wavering, living my faith life. Uh, I ain't going back and forth with wavering, living my faith life. What's up, family? Hey, check it out. Thank you for joining us for another week of word and worship. I'm amped, as you can see already. I'm excited about the word of the Lord that I'm going to share with you today. You know, we talk about having faith, and here's the reality for the believers. The just live by faith. It's not optional for us. We live by faith. We understand that without faith, it's impossible to please God. So yeah, we ain't out here just trying faith. No, no, no. We're having faith on purpose. Today, I'm preaching from the topic, living my faith life. Oh yeah, I'm in expectation of some things like you are, and we're gonna live it out. All right, let me finish this up. Living my faith life, I see y'all. Ain't going back and forth with wavering. Living my faith life. Well, blessings to you, my friends and my family. You know, the Bible says wherever your heart is, that's where your treasure is also. In other words, uh, we put our money not just where our mouth is, we put our money where our heart is. I believe that. I believe that if I believe in something, if I'm invested in something, if I'm a part of something that I believe in, then I believe I also put my money into it. Well, the same goes for the local church. The same goes for helping to move the kingdom agenda forward. If you believe in what we're doing in this part of the vineyard, if you're saying that you're connected and you're blessed by what we're doing here, well, then you will also put your treasure there. Listen, this is not a time to manipulate. I'm just, we're just going to talk real, ladies and gentlemen. If I say I believe in something and I'm connected with it, well, then I will also make investments. And when we have our offerings, our, our time of giving, it's us making uh, our hearts evident through our giving. Yeah. And so we ask that you continue to do that. Thank you for those that do it and you're consistent with it. This may be your first time. We want you to be a part of what we're doing. We work the community. We advance the kingdom. We want to keep up with the technology of the day. We want to be a blessing to those even in other countries. God has blessed us to be in holistic ministry. We have things where we are able to bless couples and singles and children, but it takes finances to do those things. And we got a whole lot more in store for us. So consider partnering with us today. God will bless you because this is good ground. Yeah, this is a great ministry that God has allowed us uh, to be a part of for such a time as this. So if your heart is here, then I'm asking that you would consider your treasure as well. Like I always say, ask God what you should give. Whatever he says, it will be right. I love you and I thank you in advance. And I pray that God will continue to bless your life because you have blessed the lives of many that you may not ever meet in Jesus name. It was my cross you bore So I could live In the freedom you died for And now my life is yours And I will sing Of your goodness forevermore Who are the
deserve the praise. Worthy is your name. Jesus, be exalted now 
God. Come on, let's give God praise for another week of word and worship here at GPWA. Hallelujah. At GPWA. I'm so excited to be here uh, to worship the Lord with you uh, in spirit and in truth. God has kept us another week, and I'm excited about that. If you haven't done it yet, I want you to do two things. Number one, I want you to hit that share button. Help Pastor Jay get the gospel out today. I want you to do that. It don't cost anything to do that. And then the, the second thing I want you to do is I want you to tag at least three people. I want you to invite them in ch to church. Tag them. Put their name in the comment because they can use this word, this encouragement that God has given me to share with the world today. I'm excited about it. Glory to God. Have you done that? I see you doing it. I see you doing it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. I won't leave y'all out. Thank y'all over there too. All right. God bless you today. Come on. Uh, let's give God praise all over everybody with your emojis, with your hands in the sanctuary. We in church. Let's have some church. Hallelujah. God, he's a wonderful savior. He's sweet. I know. He's sweet, I know. Father, we thank you today for your loving kindness and your tender mercy. Thank you, God, for your word today. It is your word that brings us life. It is your word that brings us encouragement. It is your word that shows us the way. And we are honored today to hear your word, what you have to say to the church. I pray, God, that someone who tunes in today will have a mind to live right, a mind to live better. I pray that someone is encouraged by what they hear today and that their life be better because of your word. We decree it to be so now. Call somebody, God, to ask, what must I do to be saved? We ask and pray, God, that somebody call in to the prayer line and we're going to pray with them. Glory to God and help encourage them and touch and agree with them in Jesus' name. Give clarity of thought and speech and revelation knowledge. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Come on all over. Let's give him some praise. Hallelujah. <laughs> I feel real churchy today. God is good. He's good all the time. All right. I know you shared it by now. You've tagged some people by now. Feel free to invite them during the course of this message uh, uh, so that they can be blessed by the word of the Lord. Hebrews chapter number 10. Verse number 35, no, I'm going to go verse number, Hebrews 10, I want to do verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, and then I'm going to jump over to verse 37, all right, same book. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, and then I'm going to go right to verse 37. The Bible says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised look at verse 37 for yet a little while and he that shall come will come and will not tarry allow me to reiterate it verse 23 he said hold fast hold fast to the profession of our faith without wavering for he is faithful that promised Verse 38, 37, yet a little while, any day now, any hour now, come on y'all, any minute now, if you really believe it, any second now, by the time service is over today, you could have your answer. Come on, I need somebody to believe it right there. By the conclusion of the service today, your phone could ring. You can get the email. A package could arrive at your door. For yet a little while, he that shall come will come, and he will not tarry. I want to preach and teach from the topic today, living my faith life. Come on living my faith life. This is for believers today. We are living, tell somebody I'm living my faith life. I ain't going back and forth with you wavering. <laughs> I ain't going back and forth with you wavering. You like that James uh, uh, and Chili? <laughs> I'm living my faith life. I ain't going back and forth with you wavering. I would that we consider uh, uh, this letter to the Hebrews uh, I would that we uh, consider that there is always some type of a theological debate uh, as it relates to uh, who is the appropriate author or writer of this letter to the Hebrews. Uh, you know, uh, 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 people, uh, scholars, theologians, they have all 
put in uh, their opinion and perspective based on uh, the time and the location and the writing style uh, of, of the letter to the Hebrews to come up with a conclusion as to say who they feel is the right author of this book the book of Hebrews, they've come together and they've all analyzed it. And they said, based on our study, uh, here are several conclusions that we've come to. You got men like Martin Luther, uh, who based on their analytical study, uh, they believe that uh, the uh, Apollos, one called Apollos, uh, is responsible for this letter to the Hebrews. And then of course, Tertullian disagrees with Martin Luther uh, because Tertullian feels like Barnabas is the writer of this letter to the to the Hebrews, uh, and then of course you have um, Harnack and Harris come together, and they feel as if Priscilla Priscilla is the writer uh, of this letter. It's not Apollos, according to Harnack and Harris. It is not Barnabas. It is Priscilla. Priscilla is responsible for the letter to the Hebrews, and of course William Ramsey sees it completely different than all of them. And William Ramsey says Philip wrote the book. Philip wrote the book. Uh, we know now the more traditional thought is to accredit one uh, by the name of the Apostle Paul uh, to having penned this letter to the Hebrews. So uh, 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 that's the traditional thought. Uh, people just automatically, because he wrote most of the New Testament, they just automatically uh, denote him as the appropriate author. But I believe today, ladies and gentlemen, uh, brothers and sisters, I believe that more important than you and I uh, trying to be analytical as it relates to the investigation uh, as to who the appropriate author or writer is as it relates to the letter to the Hebrews, I believe more important than that uh, is to find out what is the assignment of the letter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we could take time when we have time if we want to investigate that, but more important for the time we're going to share today, we want to talk about why was the letter written? Why was Hebrews written? What is the assignment of the book? You see, I believe that it is always uh, the intent and desire of the devil to cause you and I uh, to get off track as believers so that we become wrapped up into insignificant things that really have no uh, bearings on our elevation or enhancement as it relates to the things of God. It will not help me spiritually. Uh, it will not elevate my mind spiritually. It will not draw me closer to God. Uh, so he wants to get me off track so that I focus more on getting information uh, about who wrote the letter uh, rather than finding out what is the revelation that God has assigned to the letter that's going to bless not only those individuals, but us today. All right, so, so it doesn't matter who you agree with, whether you agree that uh, 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 ter, uh, with Tertullian or Martin Luther or Harnack and Harris or, or William Ramsey, doesn't matter. Uh, we're not going to debate that today. We want to know what is the revelation, what is the assignment of the letter. And, and one of the assignments of the letter to the Hebrews is really uh, to reassure the believers at that time uh, that their faith in Jesus the Christ is still secure and legitimate. That's one of the assignments of the letter is to make sure that or reassure them that you believing in Jesus is still legitimate. Why is that important? Uh, one of the reasons is because Jesus at this time is no longer here physically, right? Uh, no longer can we see him in the natural. We can't see him with our eyes. We can't touch him uh, naturally. He's not here in the physical realm right now. And so Hebrews is written to reassure the believers uh, that your faith in him uh, does not make you crazy. Mm -hmm. You believing in Jesus does not make you look silly just because you no longer see him here physically. Right, right. Hebrews is written to the believers so that those believers would not capitulate back to their old way of thinking. Uh, and it encourages them to know that you believing in Jesus, it is still legitimate. Uh, somebody put in the comments and say, I still believe. Yeah. Uh, call me what you 
want, I still believe. Uh, say what you want about me, I still believe in Jesus. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, that if you read through this letter uh, to the Hebrews, if you read through this letter, uh, one of the significant things of Hebrew, one of the significant things that is of Hebrews is the word faith. Everybody holler and say faith, faith, faith. Come on, I need a little bit of faith in here. Everybody holler and say faith. He said faith, it's a dominant theme. Faith is a dominant force in this letter to the Hebrews. Uh, faith, brothers and sisters, it is essential for the believer. Uh, faith is essential in order for us really to have a successful walk with the Lord. It is essential. Faith is imperative if we are going to be successful in our walk with God. God. Hear me, somebody. I got to have faith if I'm going to please God. God said the only way you can please me is by operating in faith. You want to make God happy? He says, I need your faith. Look at Hebrews 11 and 6. It's on the screen. The Bible says, without faith, what he say? Without it, it is impossible to please him. Uh, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. Let's read it one more time. Put it back on the screen. Uh huh. Without faith, it is impossible to please him. All right, you can bring it back to me. So, so if it's impossible to please him without faith, uh, then everything that we do, ladies and gentlemen, it must be done in faith. Everything that we do, every way that we operate, every function that we have, it must be done by faith if it's faith that's going to please him. You see, you see, when I'm rejoicing and when you're rejoicing and when we're giving God praise, uh, uh, when we're dancing, we danced last week, didn't we? Uh, when we're dancing and shouting before the Lord, uh, we're sh shouting and dancing uh, in faith. Come on, church. Mm -hmm. I'm rejoicing in faith. Uh, I'm not always dancing, Lady P, uh, because everything is perfect in my life. Uh, I'm dancing in faith to remind my spirit uh, that even though I may be going through something, right now God is still in control it is it is my rejoicing that overrides my trouble I wish you would hear me today I said it is your rejoicing that overrides your trouble God help me uh, you'll feel better if you just lift your hands uh, every now and then when you feel like you're being overwhelmed you need to just holler out a real good hallelujah Glory to God. Wish I had some help right there. Yeah, just holler a glory to God because my rejoicing overrides my trouble and it reminds me that God is still going to bring me out. Yes, there may be trouble. Uh, there may be opposition, uh, but I will rejoice because I have faith in him. It is faith that becomes the must-have ingredient in everything that we do to please God. It is faith. I gotta have faith if I am going to please God. It is the must-have ingredient. Put in the comments real quick and say you need this. Come on. Yeah, you need this. Let's fill this room up with some faith. Come on here. Let's fill virtual church up with some faith and tell them you need this. It is faith. It's the must have ingredient. I may not be able to dance and shout like you, but I need faith. Come on. I may not be able to sing like you, but I need faith. And, and it's the only thing that pleases God. Uh, when God is not pleased, uh, things happen. When God is not pleased, uh, people uh, tend to drown in red seas. Come on, y'all. When God is not pleased, uh, cities are destroyed. Come on, y'all. When God is not pleased, he turns up. I ain't trying to make God upset. Uh, I want to make him happy. And God declared the only way you're going to make me happy is if you and I operate by faith. Everybody open your mouth and say faith. 
faith, I got to have some faith. It is our desire. Our desire should be to please God. And I can only do it as I operate in faith. So then what is faith? Well, faith is defined, really a quick definition. Faith is God's word believed. Check this part and acted upon. Faith is God's word believed. I got to believe this. Let's have a quick Bible study. Uh, tell somebody, I got to believe this. I got to believe this. Faith is God's word believed. That's the first part. Look at Hebrews 11 and 1. It's on the screen. Hebrews 11 and 1. The Bible says, now faith. God help me. Now faith. Uh, now, I know sometimes uh, when we read that scripture, now faith, uh, we say you got to have faith now. You got to have immediate faith. Well, yeah, that's one way to look at it. Uh, but, but there was a conversation happening if you look at the verses before. And so basically the apostle or the writer of Hebrews got to the point and he was like such and such and such and such and such. Now faith, you get what I'm saying? Uh, all right. So now faith is the substance or the substructure of things hoped for it is the evidence that greek word there is the word elikos it is the evidence elikos of things not seen faith is the substructure of what i'm hoping for uh it is the uh, the evidence of what i do not see so whenever you and i brothers and sisters hope for anything there is always uh, a certain amount of expectation that is connected to that hope i need you to hear me real good on this part you cannot hope without expectation come on church uh, there is no such thing as hoping with no expectation as a matter of fact, hope minus expectation equals hopeless. Uh, if you ain't got no hope, you have no expectation because you have nothing to look forward to. I believe you showed up today on the live. You showed up in the building today for those that are here, not because you wishing God would do something, uh, but you have a hope that God is going to do everything that he declared he's going to do. And that hope gives you an expectation it is my hope that ignites my expectation. Uh, this is why the devil fights your faith uh, because he's trying to fight your hope. And if I can destroy their hope, I can annihilate their expectation to the point where you no longer look for God to do anything. You no longer expect miracles. You no longer have an expectation for things to work out. As a matter of fact, you have an expectation, uh, but your expectation uh, is to have the wrong thing happen. You know people like that? They say things like, uh, uh, nothing good ever happens for me. I never get those types of opportunities. People never support me. Uh, I have a hope and I have an expectation that God is going to do exactly what he said he's going to do. So the enemy says, let me fight your hope. Let me fight your faith. Let me destroy your expectation so that you don't believe things will get better in your life. Uh, I don't believe that you today. I believe you have expectation. Uh, put in the comments if you don't mind open your mouth and say I still believe it yeah I still believe it but it's been a whole year but I still believe God you've been waiting for seven years but I still believe God will do what he said trust and obey there is no other way I believe I wish I had some old school right there I believe God you ain't gotta like it I believe God you can speak against it I believe I know what the Lord has told me. Anybody got that type of faith right there? Uh, even when hell comes against you, you stand flat footed, square your shoulders, lift your head up and say, I believe, I believe, I believe. Y'all putting it in those comments. Uh, tell them I believe God. Uh, I believe God. The fact that I'm here, I turned on the, the Facebook live. I came into the sanctuary. It's an indication that you still have an expectation that God is going to do exactly what he declared he's going to do because believing God it brings me hope 
Come on, church. Believe in God. I got to rush through here. Believe in God brings me hope. Believing what he's declared to me brings me hope. It is my hope in God that now ignites my expectation. Check it. And my expectation is looking for what I believe God said he's going to do. I got to say it again. Believe in God brings me hope. When you get a word from God, you shouldn't still look like you've been sucking on lemons. You got a word from God. Put a smile on your raggedy face. Come on, help me, Holy Ghost. Put a smile on your face. Why are you so disgruntled? I got a word from God. And when I believe God's word, his word brings me hope. And hope is what now ignites my expectation. Y'all still with me? And now my expectation, here it is, starts looking uh, for what God said he's going to do. Uh, I got a word, so I need to be looking for what he's going to do. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, 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 the one example that I would use today uh, is that of a child on Christmas, right? Uh, on December 25th, uh, uh, we got little Noah in the building with us. Uh, on December 25th, Carla, I know you ain't even got to wake him up. Uh, on December 25th, Lavelle, he gets up uh, at 3.17 a.m. And uh, you hear little footsteps running down the hallway. Well, uh, uh, what is it about December 25th? 25th that causes little Noah to get up uh, without having his parents to wake him up. Well, uh, on December 25th, Noah has something that's called, hear me, expectation. Glory to God. And when you have an expectation, you cannot just lay there and sit there and do nothing. Expectation will cause you to get up and start looking for what you believe your parents are going to do for you on Christmas day I came to tell you church if little Noah got that much faith in his mother and his father who are mere mortals how much more faith should you and I have as the technon of God as the children of God my mama didn't give me this word my daddy didn't give me this word God gave me a promise and if God gave me a promise, I'm getting ready to look for what God said. Uh, look at somebody, put it in the comments, say, I'm looking for it. Uh, I don't care how crazy I look to you. Uh, I'm living my faith life. Uh, I wish I had a church. Uh, I'm living my faith life. Uh, God told me to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, uh, brothers and sisters, after you and I believe God's word, give me a few more minutes. After we believe God's word, word his declared word we cannot just stay and settle in belief uh, put in the comments everybody real quick and just put there's more come on there's more yeah, there's more. There's more because believing is the first part, right? So I, I got to believe God's word. But but if I just stop with belief, I also become stuck. Uh, believing God's word alone is not enough. Uh, the Bible declares in James 2 and 19, uh, the Bible says, devils believe and tremble. God help me. Uh, so it has to be more than just believing. If if devils believe what God said and they tremble uh, but they still go into hell uh, what is it what component do I need uh, that needs to be connected to my faith in believing God's word I'm glad you asked James 2 and 17 it's on the screen the Bible says even so faith if it has not works check it y'all is dead being alone God help me here ladies and gentlemen brothers and sisters once God gives you and I a word uh, what we have to do is something with what he declared. God help me today. I'm glad you believe what God said but I want to know what have you done with the word that he declared because if you still sitting on your couch Mr. Potato Head then the word cannot manifest in your life. I gotta do something I need 20 of y'all to put it in there by faith and say, do something, do, do something. <laughs> Once he gives me a word, uh, then I have to do something with what God told me. And in order for action,
action to take place in my faith uh, in order for there to be work in what I believe that God said he's going to do uh, then there are three things that must always be in alignment with one another as it relates to a word from God Travis number one is speaking number two is thinking and number three is believing they all must be in alignment one with the other uh, if I'm going to receive the word by faith and then act on the declared word by doing something with the word I have to make sure that I'm speaking thinking and believing the same thing all the time uh, speaking the word what I declare what I decree what I speak is important uh, Proverbs 18 21 declares death and life where are they they are in the power of the tongue uh, death and life I said not too long ago uh, uh, that there are some things we don't have not because the devil did it uh huh we talked ourselves out of it death and life it's in the power of the tongue revelation 12 11 they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony let me help the church out because i do not want us to minimize uh testimony uh to what we have traditionally been brought up in nothing against that uh, but testimony is not simply giving Getting up saying, uh, giving honor to God, pastor, saints, and friends. I want to thank and praise the Lord for being here today. I want to thank and praise God how he kept me all week. That's fine. That's good. Uh, but that's not all it is as it relates to testimony. When it comes to testimony, it's saying that I must agree, hear me, with what God has said about me. Uh-huh. That's a testimony. Testimony. Uh, uh, when I say I'm more than a conqueror, I just testify. Come on. When I say I can do all things through Christ uh, who strengthens me, I just testified. I overcame by the blood of the Lamb and agreeing with what God's word has declared. What I confess, it has uh, uh, the ability uh, to take authority over my life. What I confess. I need y'all to catch this because somebody going to watch this and you've been struggling with what folk have been saying about you. I said what you confess over your life is what takes authority. I don't care what them jokers say about you. Their words have no power, check it, over your life. I did not say it won't hurt your life. I did not say it won't affect your life. But I am saying they don't have the power uh, to speak a word that has authority over your life. Uh, so if you look at me and say, oh, Pastor Jay is ugly. He an ugly man. Them words ain't got no power over my life. Uh, no, 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 no. The only time it takes authority in my life is when I open my mouth and I declare that I'm ugly. But I ain't ugly. I am fearfully and wonderfully made by God. The devil is a lie. I'm not ugly and I'm not going to allow that word to take authority over my life. I decree who God said that I am. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, there are others that would also argue as it relates to our confession. They would argue with us that if you do not speak your reality uh, then you are denying your reality you're in denial of what's in front of you no I'm not in denial of my reality I'm just simply articulating his theology over my life what did Joel 3 and 10 declare Joel 3 and 10 said let the weak did it say let the weak say I'm weak did it say let the weak say I'm struggling uh, did it say let the weak say I can't do it no Joel 3 and 10 said I don't need you to look at your reality I need you to speak the theology of my word let the weak say that I am strong I need about 10 of y'all 15 if you will put it in the comments right there and say I am strong 
Ha, even if I feel weak, ha, I'm going to open up my mouth and say I am strong. Ha, even when my family say I'm weak, ha, I'm going to shout from the mountaintop ha, that I am strong. Come on, church. Ha, I got victory. Ha, I got joy. Ha, I got power. Ha, open up your mouth and declare ha, not what your mama said ha, but declare who God said you are ha, let me hurry to a close ha, in the second Corinthians chapter number 10 ha, he told us ha, that we must cast down imaginations ha, so we've already spoke and confessed his word ha, that's a part of the working what we believe ha, he now tells us to cast down imaginations ha, uh, because imaginations happen in our mind. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, uh, it is the mind uh, that is the planning field uh, for the activities in our life. Uh, in other words, nobody just pops up. Uh, no one just arrives. Uh, it is first planned out in your mind. Uh, and as you plan it out in your mind, uh, uh, it now begins to manifest, manifest uh, in in the activities of your life. Your mind is the planning field that begins to act out physically what you've planned. I got a word from somebody right there. If you don't like where you are, change your mind. Y'all don't know when to shout. You don't like how you're feeling? Change your mind. What does the Bible say in John 13 and 2? The Bible says that Satan, he put into the mind of Judas to betray the Lord. Look at what happened here. Satan said, if I'm going to persuade Judas, I got to get into his mind. Judas took the thought of Satan and took it as his own. And he began to act out what the devil planted in his mind. Uh, as his own thought uh, that was not the thought of Judas uh, it is Satan that planted that thought uh, in his mind uh, that's why the Bible declares to us church uh, let this mind come on uh, let it be in you uh, which was also in Christ Jesus uh, that word let in Greek uh, it is also translated as the word exercise uh, it really means uh, Exercise this mind in you, huh? which is also in Christ Jesus, huh? which means it don't happen by osmosis. Huh? You got to put in some work huh? to have the mind of God. Huh? Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, huh? if I'm going huh? to have action in my faith, huh? if I'm going to work huh? what I believe by faith, huh? then I must speak what God God has declared and I also must think the thoughts of God how do I think like God how do you think like God do you think like God by saying thee and thou thou knowest O Lord no you ain't thinking like God you thinking like the King James version y'all don't want to have no church when you think like God you gotta shift your mind Mind. And you got to think lovely thoughts. Come on. Thoughts that are honest and pure. Thoughts that are true. And thoughts that have a good report. Shake your neighbor's hand. Emoji shake their hand. And tell them think on these things. Stop thinking the worst case scenario. Stop thinking that it ain't going to work out for you. Think lovely, honest, true. And of a good report report. It's Henry David Thoreau who speaks to us and I quote he said I know of no more encouraging fact than the unquestionable ability of man to elevate his life, here it is by conscious endeavor, unquote in other words Henry David said if man is going to get himself out of the situation he's in I have no doubt in my mind. He 
does it on purpose. He does it consciously. He purposely elevates his mind. You don't like that one? Well, then let's go old school. Oh, mother used to say, elevate your mind. Let's go higher. Elevate your mind. Come on, y'all. I'm elevating my mind. And I'm getting ready to do it on purpose. I'm elevating my thoughts. And I'm getting ready to do it on purpose. I'm no longer going to have stinking thinking. I'm going to elevate the way that I think. Shake your neighbor's hand. And say, I'm getting ready to think on a new level. I'm getting ready to speak on a new level. Tell somebody, I believe God. I believe God is going to do what he declared. And I'm getting ready to grab it by faith. God told me to tell you, in the nine minutes that I got left, he said, tell my people. Tell them your belief in God. Tell them it must override the opinions of the people that are around you. I need you to think greater than your haters around you. Uh, let me help us real quick. Because everybody around you that don't believe like you believe, they're all not haters. Some of them may be your family and friends. They're not hating on you. They just don't see what you see. God, help me to preach. Uh, they don't believe like you believe. So you got to have the ability to even look at your loved ones and elevate your mind above the opinions of the folk that are around you. It's like what happened in Mark chapter 5 around verse 21 they came to Jarius and they said Jarius man they said don't trouble the master leave Jesus alone. Why are we going to leave him alone? Because you came to Jesus because your daughter was sick but that same little girl she's dead now so don't bother Jesus Jesus overheard them he looked at Jarius and said Jarius I need you to elevate your thoughts above the people around you he said Jarius keep on believing who am I talking to I need you to put your name in the comments and after your name I need you to say keep on believing my honor keep on believing lady P keep on believing Kimberly keep on believing James keep on believing let me encourage myself Jarrett in the midnight hour keep on believing God Jesus so Jarius you came to me for healing but what you need to know Jarius not only am I Jehovah Rapha the Lord that heals but Jarius I'm also the resurrection though she be dead yet shall she live again shake your neighbor's hand and said it will live I got a word on it and it will live God told me to declare in the six minutes, six minutes, six minutes, Dougie Fr Y'all don't want to have no church. The six minutes I got left, he told me to tell you to maintain your hope in God. How you going to maintain your hope? I'm going to live the faith life. I'm not going to be moved by what I see from others. I'm not going to be moved by anything that's the antithesis of what God has declared. I'm going to keep on speaking it. I'm going to keep on thinking it. 
that I got one more thing, Carla. Huh? I'm going to keep on huh? believing it. Huh? He told us huh? in Mark 11, huh? around 23, huh? if you say to the mountain, huh? be now removed huh? and cast into the sea huh? and don't doubt in your heart, huh? he said, you shall huh? have what you say. Huh? It's going to happen to you. Uh, I mean no disrespect uh, to any songs of old. Uh, when I hear the song uh, that says, Lord, uh, don't move my mountain, uh, but give me the strength to climb. Uh, that ain't what his word said. Uh, his word told me uh, that if I look at the mountain, uh, but leave in my heart, uh, and tell it to go. Uh, that the mountain gotta go I came to encourage somebody just to remind you today you are not a mountain climber God told me to tell you you are a mountain mover shake somebody's hand and say Lord I believe so I'll tell my mountain move out of my way mountain of poverty move out of my way mountain of depression move out of my way mountain of low self esteem move out of my way mountain of carnality move out of my way mountain of low thinking where my mountain movers at I wish I had a few of y'all that would just go like this and say move out of my way I believe God's word I spoke God's word I thought God's word and I'm confident that he will heal me I'm gonna live my my faith life and I'm confident that he will he's gonna bring me out I'm gonna live my faith life and I'm confident that God will be my help God told me to tell you keep speaking it keep on thinking it keep on believing it and as you do you are living your faith life oh God is there anybody out there that's tired of living beneath your faith shake somebody and say neighbor I know what he said I'm getting ready to live my faith life I got to get out of here I got to hurry to a close but as I go to my seat God told me to tell you I know you heard the word I know you've been speaking it I know you've been thinking it and I know you believe the word I know that you've been living your faith life but let me give you a word of encouragement the Bible declares because you've been living your faith life I came to declare that he that will come shall come I wish I had a church right there tell somebody it's getting ready to happen I said it's getting ready to happen I'm not trying to tickle your funny bone thus saith the Lord if you live your faith life it's getting ready to happen any day now hear the footsteps of the almighty God in your neighborhood in your house walking up the steps getting ready to show up and show out but hold fast to the profession of your faith God told me to tell you live live your faith life let them talk let them doubt let them leave you let them put you down don't be moved keep 
keep speaking, keep thinking, keep believing, and he that will come shall, shall, he shall come. I need about 20 of y'all. Put it in the comments and say, I'm living my faith life. Come on, open your mouth. Say, I'm living my faith life. The devil is a lie. I've been living beneath my privileges. I'm going to speak what God said. I'm going to believe what God said. I'm going to think what God said. Come on, y'all. I'm going to live my faith life. I'm going to decree it. And I'm going to elevate my mind by conscious endeavor. I need y'all to put it in the comments as I go to my seat. I need you to put it in the comments and just put two words. On purpose. Come on. On purpose. On purpose. I'm going to live my faith life on purpose. I'm not going to hit and miss with it. I'm going to do it on purpose. I'm going to think like Jesus on purpose. Oh, come on. I'm going to believe that I'm a mountain mover on purpose. I'm going to allow my testimony to be what God's word has declared on purpose. I'm going to live my faith life. Listen, the number is on the screen. You can go now. You can dial that number now and one of our intercessors will pick up the phone and they're going to pray with you. You just need to touch and agree. You need us to encourage you. You want to be saved. You let us know on the prayer line. Uh, call us right now. You're not going to talk to a machine. You're going to talk to a child of God on the other line ready to take your hand and walk alongside with you. It is so now. God bless you today. Come on. Don't you leave here and, and not dial that number. You've been asking and praying for an answer. God said, I've answered you through this ministry. I've answered you through this word. For such a time as this, you were ready to give up. And God said, you got to live your faith life. We decree it to be so now. Come on. We decree it to be so now. In Jesus' mighty name. Those that's in virtual church and those that's uh, uh, in the building right now. Come on, let's join together with worship and praise. We believe your word. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. I'll see you next week. Until then, live your faith life. Thank you for being a part of another GPWA experience. Don't miss a single broadcast or any content that we're creating. Go now and subscribe and or follow us on all of our platforms. Be sure to like and share the gospel. We love you with the love of Christ. We'll see you next time at GPWA.